Uh, ask Reddit thread. Teen Redditors, 13 to 19. What is something important that you feel your parents should learn? Basic advice is something deep. Doesn't matter. Say something for this thread. People who once were teens count. So as long as comments pertain to the question. Uh, just because one of my friends is a girl doesn't mean you constantly have to bring her up. Sometimes I believe that my parents are still in elementary school. <laughs> in their defense, you were until recently, and time is experienced different as you get older. My girlfriend's son was four when I met him. He's six now and in first grade. I'm starting to see how fast it happens. Kids change faster than most adults can properly keep up with. When you've experienced 40 years, one year is significantly less an amount than when you've got 15 under your belt. Your year is far more valuable to you than theirs are. When you're in elementary school, they're probably still in their 20s, and a year is still more valuable to them than they, they hit upwards in the 40s. Your year in elementary schools account for more of their knowledge of you than when you're in high school, and it doesn't help that a teenager begins to keep more to themselves and their childhood counterparts. I'm 27, and just seeing how this all works because of my time with my girlfriend and her son. Kids change faster than adults do, and adults have other worries that occupy their minds much of the time that the reality is kept from the children. Well said. I was already an adult when my oldest niece was born, and now she's 20. I'm still not used to it. In my head, she's forever 15, 5 years old. Growing up happens really fast when you're watching it happen from an older person's perspective. Get the I want to be grandmother speech ever? What? Oh, I want to be a grandmother. <laughs> no, I'm too young to have received that speech, but I'll imagine it'll come up in a couple years. I'm 26. When it does come up, it comes up a lot. No, Mom, we don't want kids right now. We have shit to do, like go vacation and drinking. Uh, she takes it out on the dog by spoiling her, though. Big ups to my little sister for popping up a couple of babies and taking the pressure off of me. Oh, same with me. <laughs> Uh, I'm 23. My mom buys me shit I think I'm supposed to use to seduce women, but I don't know. I got a scented candle. Do I set her on fire? <laughs> Do I hit over the head with it and then mate? <laughs> it has, however, been useful for fusing the end of some paracord. Safer than the bouton stove I usually use. Uh, let's see, I am 22 and my dad still brings up the girl best friend I had in high school, all of whom I've never seen anymore because they moved away. It gets super awkward when he says he thinks they were interested in me, or might be really attractive now that they are out of high school. Almost all of them are married now, so it's even more weird on top of that. Oh god this. In high school, my three best friends were females and I am male. Almost every day my mom mentioned it if I was dating or saying which ones I should date. At that point, I really didn't care about dating, only having close friends. And that's healthy and normal. I don't understand why so many parents brush for every boy girl relationship to be romantic. <sighs> because usually, guys are only friends with girls if they like them. Usually, that's, that's totally not the case all the time. Most of my friends are girls, and you can't like all of them. Sure, I like one of them, but I have like you know, a whole bunch of other ones that I don't like. And, whatchamacallit, I only actually have one friend that actually lives close to me. And she uh, happens to be of the opposite gender. And my mom's like, oh, so why don't you two uh, start dating? I was like, oh, because I'm not interested in her like that. Oh, okay. And then the question comes up. See, it still happens even when you're when you're older. Uh, knock before entering. Knock and wait for them to say you can come in before coming in. Knocking then immediately opens the doors. Does not count. Uh, give me time to hide my bong. I'm respecting your right to privacy by knocking, but asserting my authority as a parent by coming in anyways. <laughs> Fairly odd parents. That one scene in Rick and Morty where Jerry walks into more with his laptop pretty much sums it all up. You're really playing with fire, man. Uh, do not insist on comparing me to my friends. They do not act the same way in front of you as they might in their own home. And you have no clue how they act when they're at home with their own parents. Be more like Jared. Mom, if you saw how Jared talks to his mom when I'm there, you praise me and call me a fucking saint. <sighs> Don't stop me from hanging out with friends and then later complain why I'm always in my room and not outside enjoying life. That's just unfair. 
This happened to be my senior year of high school. I hadn't had much luck with friends because of moving around, so I didn't hang out with people. However, I had lots of friends online who I would stay up and talk to for hours. I was pretty much constantly glued to my computer or phone. Senior year rolls around and I managed to befriend some pretty cool people. We were hanging out and going to concerts and shit. It was a really awesome time and I finally felt like a teen. Suddenly, my parents, mom, stepdad, plus dad, demanded I meet them in a public place and confront me about my crazy lifestyle and how I've changed and how they don't like it. They complained non-stop for three years that I didn't go out, that I didn't invite friends over it, and that I wasn't social. And finally, when I do, they say they complain. Fucking parents, man. Hmm. You know what? My mom never really cared what I did. Now that I think about it. Uh, yeah, I could pretty much do whatever I wanted. You're such a smart kid. Why are you struggling now? Yes, mom. I was a smart kid when I was learning middle school math. It gets gradually harder. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I get this one completely. When I was a little kid, I was really good at school. I was in a special reading program, got good grades, never got into trouble. But when I got into middle school, expecting everything to be just as easy, it hit me that this is what it was like to struggle. So I buckled up and tried hard to get better grades. School was still boring, but at least it wasn't beating on me. The problem was I was getting into the CB range and not the BA range. My parents kept pushing me to do better in school, but in the wrong way. Every night after dinner, they'd call me up and ask me why I was doing so poorly. It wasn't fun. I got depressed over school. I think because people would look at my grades and call me smart in elementary school, so I kind of tied my self-worth to grades. After doing pretty shit in high school, I decided that college would be more of the same, but I still didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. Long story short, I got a job delivering pizzas, and I found out that I love it. I'm currently working on becoming a mailman because driving around gave me more joy than any day at school ever had. I guess what I'm saying is, don't think your grades are who you are. They are a tiny piece of you. Find your passion, find it on your own time. If you can, get a job in it. It has definitely helped with depression for the first time in a while I actually have direction. Whew, that's pretty good advice. School is really boring. I still got really good grades, but I won't doubt that it wasn't boring as shit. Wow, I was just about to ask you if you'd consider trucking for the pay. Google tells me mailmen make over 50k, and apparently the average for trucking is 48k. Though the peak is a lot higher with long distance and such. Delivery mail is absolutely fantastic job. Good pay, benefits, job security. It's also a ton of work. My father did for many years. He always loved seeing the people and the dogs every day. He's he was mostly a walking route, so when he quit due to MS, they had a hard time finding a rookie that could walk as fast as he did. Every day is a leg day at the post office. That doesn't sound half bad. Uh, I fucking felt algebra. My mother said, you used to be smart in math back in grade 5. You were in a gifted class. Yeah, because no one in my class knew how to do fucking division and multiplication. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Uh, I understand that compared to you, I shouldn't have any stress, but teen stress does exist. Maybe in the future, I'll learn how naive I was and how small my stress now are. But right now, what I'm stressed about matters to me. Well, yeah, just because the problems someone else have aren't big compared to what you're going through doesn't mean stress is any less valid. People in all walks of life stress out. Even people who have everything handed to them and have the greatest lives ever, they still stress about stuff because it's a natural human phenomena. One that has allowed us to survive as long as we have. I don't know, man. High school was fucking hard. I'm 22, so I'm in the adult world, but remember in the teen years, high school was the absolute worst. No sleep, seven classes of constant homework, papers, projects, and all the decisions that define your future. On top of that, there's a lot of social interaction on a daily basis that can really affect your success or failure. I get that high school is only four years of life, but it is a very difficult four years, and they tend to affect people the rest of their lives. Don't downplay your life when you're that age. Your problems are real large for you. Sorry for rambling block attacks, I think adults just want to feel superior to younger people. College senior here. Fuck high school. Mmm, high school is not that hard. Uh, I'm 27 and glad college is over. After work, which is basically hanging out all day, I get to hang out and do whatever I want. College was fun and shit, but once, if, you find a good job and get the ball rolling on life. It's just a big hanging out time. I guess you got an awesome job like I do. Uh, even looking back, high school is difficult. So much pressure coming from all directions. Pressure to get into good universities or else you're a failure. Find a girlfriend, have a social life, be popular in school, all while working at part-times or volunteer activities while hopped up on hormones. And my dad, who's terrible at emphasizing, would always roll his eyes and say, School's the easy part, kid. No, it wasn't. And it was the first time we dealt with any of these pressures. I'm a working adult with a mortgage, and I still think my life is infinitely less stressful now than 
than it was in high school. Hmm. All the pressure and shit. In high school, I was just doing whatever I wanted. The only thing I was forced to do was get a part-time job. That sucked. That and football. That was a lot of hard work. I was constantly tired. That sucked. The actual school part, though, where I had to, you know, do homework and classwork, uh, that was always easy. Always easy. Uh, let's see. Just as long as you, you know, actually do your work, you you do very well. There's a whole bunch of people in my classes that I was in who just straight up uh, just didn't do anything. I was like, there's a reason you're failing this. You know, if you just paid attention in class, uh, did what the teachers tell you, did the little workouts they, they give you, you know, they're not in setting you guys up to fail. The stuff they give you actually is going to be on the test. Just do your work and you'll do fine. Seriously, not that hard. How can you guys be so stupid? Or, or, of course, I could say that from the normal classes. When I was in advanced classes, uh, everyone kind of got their shit together. But I don't like taking advanced classes because they require more work, and I did not want to do that. Uh, you're going to have a blast. Seriously, the amount of mandatory bullshit plummets. The rules you have to follow, you learned in kindergarten. Don't lie, don't hit, don't steal. Everything else is negotiable. I think this is a big one. I'm a mom with two teenagers. Their dad forgets what a being teenager was like. I'm 40. I'm 48. And disregards when they feel stressed like it's silly. We had our stretches that cause us great agony. But I find now teenagers have far more stress. So learning to cope is a big deal. And it matters. So talking about it or using sports or video games as stress relievers should be just as important as a parent using their coping tools. Regardless if they feel it's important or not. Using sports as a stress reliever? <laughs> it was video games for my uh repice repose hmm what's the right word for it video games was how i unwinded from a long day of high school i you know what i think i actually worked harder in high school than i ever have in my life just because of the school work the f sports and the part-time job that was that was too much work i don't work anywhere near as much as i used to back then and holy crap was i in good shape too uh, let's see, that admitting that you were wrong isn't the end of the world, and makes me have more respect for you. When a mother apologizes for stuff, it makes me realize she's just a human being who makes mistakes and I can forgive her. When she doesn't apologize for stupid, silly things, it just shows how she's being petty. I think this applies to most human beings, not just adults. Uh, get my attention before talking to me. They do slash did get mad at me when I, f when I missed the first half of what they are saying. But it's because I'm already doing something. I don't mind pausing my game, putting down my book, phone, muting the TV, etc. Just say my name or hey you before you start talking so I realize I'm supposed to engage. Believe me, this happens just as much to people. I hate it when I'm working on that computer with my headphones in. And out of nowhere, my wife gets pissed because I missed some earth-shattering announcement about her best friend's dog she saw on Facebook or something. <laughs> yeah, like I said, I'm totally fine if they interrupt me. Even if it's just for stupid shit, just give me a heads up. Uh, my parents learned this. But my grandmother got so frustrated that I can tune out a lot of stuff, but I do pick up my name. I try to do the same with my son. I start everything with a yo, hey, sack. Uh, my wife needs to learn this, so get used to it. It doesn't get better. Okay. Like you guys are just really bad at communicating with each other. Uh, don't make fun of our relationships. Whenever they see me talking to a girl, they always ask, Who's your new girlfriend? They always ask me after school, How's your girlfriend doing? Even when they know I'm not in a relationship, or even right after a breakup. I know they're not doing it to be mean, but it's like, it's little stuff like this that makes me so hesitant to share my actual relationships with them. Just remember that this is a sort of awkward time for us, and relationships are no exception. I always try to take it in just because I know they're kidding, but other people might take it as an insult. Or you're pushing them to find a girlfriend slash boyfriend when they're not ready. Also, just because I've been stressed or mopey doesn't mean I'm gay. <laughs> it just means I don't feel like talking. I've had to explain twice to my parents that I'm not a closet homosexual. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> How does that even translate? <laughs> oh, my God. oh, people are so dumb. Ugh.
<laughs> My parents are fucking convinced I'm trans. Are you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my god, that's funny. <laughs> okay, let's go on to the next one. Ugh. Actually, you know what? What is this? This is exactly what my parents were like. It really bothered me even though I knew they weren't being mean. Even now at 28, if I see a girl or talk to someone in front of my mom, my dad just lets me be now. I still hold back a lot due to how they react in my teenage years. I know my mom wants me to open up to her, and I know if I can if I wanted. But those memories run deep with me. I have thought about uh, saying something, but I've worried a hell of a lot of emotions I bottled up will come out, and I'm not sure how I will handle it. I have a really good relationship with my mom, and I don't want to say anything that could tar it. She is one in a million, and I'm so fortunate to have her as a mother. Parents, don't tease your teenagers. Oh, lots of people are close with their mothers. I never was. My mom's a huge gossip. If I told her something, I would be essentially telling everyone in my immediate family. Well, same with my sisters. Actually, anyone in my immediate family. They're all a bunch of huge gossips, but that's that's not really uh, a unique trait. It's just something girls do in general. Yes, I understand that my problems aren't anywhere as big as yours. They're a lot smaller and easily evolvable. But my problems to me are the same size as your problems to you. Whew, you can't pause online games. Oh my god, the amount of times I had to explain. Uh, wow, to my mom. It was ridiculous. She finally got the hang of it, though, because I patiently explained it over and over again. And now that my little brother plays Heroes in the Storm and WoW... Uh, and my mom tells him to go do something. Uh, she understands when he tells her that he can't pause the game. Because of all the years I spent drilling that into her head for him. Lucky little brothers. They didn't have to suffer like I did. I understand this oh too well. I don't have any kids myself, but I used to full-time nanny three kids who played video games non-stop. I understood the fact that their games lasted 10 to 30 minutes each, and you couldn't pause it. So I would always tell them, don't start another game, I need your help in a bit. If they start another game, they're faults. If I need their help now, then they have to get off. If I knew they were leaving an hour, but their game might last a full hour, I would tell them, after that game, that's it. You don't have time for another one. I always met them halfway, and if I could put off needing their help until after the game was alone, was done, I would. Unless I told them previously what was going to happen. See, this person gets it. That's a smart way to approach it. That's a great approach. I'm glad you took the time to understand this. I played a lot of games as a kid. My kids are too young to play serious online games yet, but I was planning on taking an approach such as this. It's only fair way. It's become unfair when the teen is expected to drop everything at a moment's notice to do their parents' bidding. The teen expects the parent to bend to the game, even when they've been given sufficient notice of when they will be needed for something. I think teens become rebellious, aka reasonably frustrated when they are expected to drop everything because it makes it seem like their parents' time is more important than theirs and vice versa. <sighs> but your food is getting cold. My god, I know this one way to tell. Uh, privacy. My grandmother will come to my room while I'm sleeping just to look through my window above my head to see what the neighbors are doing. <laughs> she looks above my head to peep at what I'm doing on my phone. She gets mad at me when I tell her uh, an answer to a personal question she asked me. Wait, she gets mad at me when I don't tell her. Oh, okay. She's also untrustworthy and will lie to make a story more interesting, so I can't tell her anything in fear she will spread a rumor that isn't true about me. I once told her my own gym teacher passed away from cancer, and she proceeded to tell her friends and tell her my gym teacher dropped dead in front of us in gym and cancer spilled out of her. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Your grandma sounds like a terrible person. I hope someone at least came by to clean up that cancer. <laughs> Don't be too controlling. My parents are always wondering who I'm texting, what I'm doing 24-7. Give me some time. No, give me some space. I'm a teenage boy. I'm supposed to have some privacy. Seriously, we have rap laptops in our room. Buster to our rooms without knocking. You're playing with fire here, Dad. Oh, well, my parents used to knock, followed by burst into my room without asking. Oh, let's see. Uh, not a teenager, but it hasn't been that long. I'm 21. 
I was raised mostly by my grandparents, and it bothered me that they said stuff like, get off the computer and come watch TV with us. It's not good to be on the computer that long. Had they said, get off the computer and go out, it would have been different, but it's just annoying when parents think that being on the computer is doing nothing. You can play video games, which requires you to think and interact. Awkward teenagers make friends online. People maintain friendships through messaging, close friends, etc. Uh, just don't tell me that two hours of computer is time is bad when you and lots of other people watch TV for the amount of time every day. Well, they're old people. They probably don't understand. My mom was like this. She would watch TV for at least three hours straight every night and would always give me shit for playing video games for the same amount of time. My wife does this. She will sit and watch three hours of some nonsense Kardashian bullshit and get mad when I want to go to the other room and play video games or get on my computer. She can't understand that me not wanting to be in the room listening to a bunch of dumb cunts scream at each other on TV does not mean I don't want to spend time with her. <laughs> Grr, this is my boyfriend. If I'm on Reddit, I'm wasting time on useless shit, but the alternative is to watch mindless television with him. So let me run it for half an hour while you watch Storage Wars. My mom really needs to learn that if she wants to talk to her openly about my life and not to lie to her, she can't freak out when I'm honest with her. The few times I've confided in her when I was in a situation that I needed help with, she completely overreacted and made it a terrible experience for both of us. It stressed her out when I tell her about my life, and her stress makes me stressed. It's better for both of us if I lie to her. I've got Reddit to help me figure shit out now. <laughs> Reddit is better advice than a bad parent. I'm not 18, but I think the biggest thing I respect, you need to respect your children and talk to them like people. One thing that comes to mind, when I was like 17, my boyfriend got me some expensive candy for Valentine's Day. My stepdad ate a bunch of it. I was in my room, I complained, and he said it's his house, he can do what he wants. He basically said everything in his house was his, which is ludicrous. So yes, let your kids have privacy, respect, possessions. They shouldn't have to hide their valuables in their own space. I have to hide my money that I earned from my job from my own dad. He, hell, he still owes me two grand for my car that I paid for. He said he needed it because he didn't want to fix his, then wrecked it, told me i tough out of luck because he paid for it, which I paid back in full. I no longer associate with him. That sounds like my mom. <sighs> A college student here. You don't have to use my full name, including middle, when you call me to dinner. Save that for something important. If you call me when I'm gone for a semester in another state and I don't pick up, leave me some indication of how important your call is. Call me can either mean Uncle Fred died or I want to know how you're doing. The second point is crucial. Call me when you get this. Sounds like a family emergency. Uh, just because I'm not hungry now doesn't mean does not mean I hate your cooking. But sometimes, yeah, their cooking might suck. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I hear one of my family's pretty decent cooks. Irrational punishments don't teach me anything. They would, in fact, just want me to rebel more. Man, this. When I was a teen, I remember my mom would punish me and my, me and my dad would give me consequences. The difference was that my mom would try to hurt me as bad as I hurt her. If I made her mad, she'd try to make me mad by punishing me. Let's say I didn't call her to tell her where I was. She might ground me from my computer because she knew I'd be mad. It was about evening the pain or something. Dad, however, would make the consequences relevant to the fence. Forgot to call, no phone for a week. Stayed up too late playing games and slept in, missing school, no PlayStation for a while. While with Dad, it seemed more like he was trying to teach me how consequences work in real life, where Mom was just being vengeful. See, your dad knows how to go about it. Uh, actually, 22, but close enough. The biggest thing for me is my parents trying to raise me in the same manner their parents raised them. While their parents did a fine job, life for a teenager is so much different than it was 20 or 30 years ago. So please don't judge me for doing different things than what you were doing at the same age. My mom tries this crap all the time. She tries to make me independent and does weird shit all the time. Did I mention she still thinks filet petit is the greatest thing ever? What? Uh, communication through technology is still communication. I know it's not true for all people in parents' age, but a lot seem to be stuck on the idea that just because you're texting someone or messaging them online, it's somehow not real contact, not a real relationship with the other person. For my parents, anyway, learning how to use technology and the internet. The time we live in now are very different than the days my parents used to live in, and they seem really hesitant to learn how to use the internet and technology. I believe it could potentially make their lives easier, and it could help in many ways. My mother frequently asked me to set up all her shit and to bookmark everything for her so that she doesn't have to research 
search for it. She also complains to me about any little thing that happens on her computer that she's not familiar with. And this gets annoying when you live six hours away and she has no idea what she did wrong to cause it. Like, I don't know what you did to mess that up. Why don't you just Google it and learn how to fix it yourself like everyone else? You need to learn how to use a computer yourself and to be able to solve problems like that because I don't always know what it is that you did wrong. Whew. I'm glad I don't have to do any of that. You see, I do all of my work on the computer, so everyone in my family, immediate family, thinks I'm some kind of computer whiz, but I always uh, make a very big point of it to say, no, 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 what I do on the computer has nothing to do with how the computer works. It's video editing. It's a completely different thing that has nothing to do with how I can fix your computer from a virus. Luckily, there's a couple other people in our family who actually do how to know how to fix computers, so... I don't ever get asked to fix computer shit, which is great. And while, yes, you do pay for tuition, car, clothing, food, etc., you need to give me some sense of control. Rules are important, I understand, but I need to learn how to function on my own. If you couldn't tell from my brother developing alcoholism the second he got to college, if you control your kids too hard in high school and let them into college, they don't know what to do with their freedom and go fucking nuts. Huh. That'd be nice to have everything paid for. As soon as I turned 16, my mom made me get a job and then pay for everything myself. This, my mom refuses to even leave my home, leave my home open for a full night. She's a flight attendant. So when she has to work for a couple of days, our aunt watches me and my brother. We are 17 and 15 with no past drug use or any sort of thing that would make her not trust us. I ask her how I'm supposed to cope with living on my own in college when I eventually literally never had a night at home unsupervised. All I get is a blank stare. Uh, please don't come into my room without asking, knocking, and close the door. Wait, how to... Oh, you see, my mom used to be a drug addict, and we were left home by ourselves all the time. So, this was never a concern for me. Living on my own was just as naturally as living with uh, my mom. <laughs> I learned how to cook at a young age. Uh, let's see, I trust my parents enough to understand me very well. I, at this point, don't think there's anything I can teach them. Hmm. You're very lucky. Don't make fun of your kid during puberty. Some people may not care, but the teasing screwed with me more than the gross carpets of hairs on my legs did. Eww. Gross. Alright, uh, that's kind of long. It's almost 30 minutes. It's gonna end it here.